Hello, and welcome to the reading of the book Little Pear by Eleanor Frances Lattimore. The book Little Pear is set in China in the early 1900s. And in this video, this is video one, we're going to read chapter one and chapter two of the video Little Pear by Eleanor Frances Lattimore. And before we begin reading, I'd like to share a few little facts with you about China that might help you understand some parts of chapters one and two better. First, we're looking at some stone lions. And some people in China believe in evil spirits and good spirits and they believe that when they put these lions lion statues made out of stone near their house or near their business that these lion statues will ward off evil spirits and keep them away from their house or their business and then so those are stone lions lions made out of stone and each little part of the lion has symbolism this is supposed to be like the female lion that is holding a little cub down here, a little lion, and um, the youth of China. And here is a ball under the male lion's foot that's supposed to represent purity. And um, each part of the lion has a different meaning. So I hope you'll take the time to look that up. This is a shuttlecock. And in the story, Little Pear, the little boy, he will... Uh, talk about his friends playing with a shuttlecock and in America we have one kind of shuttlecock that has more of a ball on the end and feathers that go out in a perfect circle but the Chinese shuttlecock uh, has more of just a round end and with the feathers coming from the middle and they use it to play a different kind of game kind of like hacky sack if you've ever heard that by kicking the shuttlecock to each other or trying to keep it in the air themselves and another word that you'll hear in this reading of Little Pear is the word rickshaw. And a rickshaw is a type of transportation and used commonly in lots of parts of Asia, especially China, where one person owns the rickshaw or works at the rickshaw and they run or walk pulling another person in a small cart behind them. So these two pictures are both closer to the time, the setting of this book, um, where people pulled them, and people still do that today in 2018, pull a rickshaw running or walking while other people ride in the cart. Um, but in 2018, you'll also see rickshaws like this one, where the person has kind of attached or built a bicycle onto the rickshaw and will um, ride the bicycle and pull the person in the cart behind. But there are still rickshaws even in 2018 where someone pulls them. And that certainly was the type of rickshaw that Little Pear is describing in the book that he sees. And since this is a paid type of transportation, the person in the cart would have to pay money to the person pulling them to, to, pay, uh, to pull them in that rickshaw. And so we have stone lions, statues made of stone that were in the shape of lions that they thought would get rid of evil spirits, a shuttlecock, a small uh, round toy with feathers on the back used for playing a sport or a game, and rickshaw. And let's read chapters one and two of the book Little Pear by Eleanor Frances Lattimore. Little Pear. This says, also by Eleanor Francis Lattimore, is another book called Little Pear and His Friends. There's several cute little illustrations, just black line drawings to help us understand the story in this book. Here's our title page. Here's a illustration of Little Pear. I just want you to take a second and think about, if you're reading this book, how Little Pear is like you and how Little Pear might be different than you. We know that this book was set over a hundred years ago, and so some things will be different because the time was different. And it depends on where you are while you're watching this video. If you're in the United States of America, many things will be different about Little Pear and his life 
because he's from China and you are from a different place than that. Little Pear, the story of a little Chinese boy. But some things are the same everywhere. So if you're a little boy or a little girl, you'll I want you to listen for things about Little Pear that are the same as you. Little Pear is a boy, and you can see that he has one ponytail up there on top of his head. And I, I don't think that's as common in China now in 2018, but in the early 1900s, that would have been a fairly common fashion for a little boy or even grown men to wear one or more ponytails. And you see that part of the hair around the ponytail has been shaved off, and that was just part of the fashion, the way they like to have haircuts according to the information that I found. Here are the table of contents. This book has nine chapters. So we'll read one to two chapters in each video. Little Pear. Little Pear and his family. There was once a Chinese boy called Little Pear. He lived with his father his mother, and his two sisters in a small house at the edge of a village in China. All around the village were flat fields of cabbages and beans and onions, and far away on one side was a great highway that led to the city, and far away on the other side was a river. Little Pear's mother used to say to him, you may run and play out of doors, but do not go too near to the river. You might fall in. Sometimes, though, Little Pear would disobey his mother. He loved to stand on the high bank and look down on the swift, muddy river and the ships sailing down it towards the sea. He would hold very tight to a huge willow tree with both hands and think, I can never fall in, not if I'm very careful like this. Little Pear was a very mischievous child. Now we've already heard one example where his mother told him, don't do something, and he did it anyway. What do you think mischievous means? Mischievous means when a child does things that they're not supposed to, even though they know that they're not supposed to, and they're kind of good at not getting caught, but they still do things they're not supposed to, even though they don't get caught. His sisters said he was naughty. His father said he was naughty and would cry, Ha ah! ha! What a bad boy you are. But his mother said, He is very little. When he gets bigger, he will be good. You wait and see. It doesn't matter if he is naughty now. Sometimes. And they all loved Little Pear very much. Little Pear was five years old. He had a round, solemn face with eyes like black apple seeds. He didn't look mischievous at all. His head was shaved, except for one round spot just over his forehead where the hair was allowed to grow and braided into a little pigtail and tied with bright colored string. His mother thought this looked very beautiful. He was always very gaily dressed in flowered jackets buttoned down the front. What do you think gaily means? Gaily means that they look happy. The word gay means happy. So if he's gaily dressed, his flowered jackets look happy. And striped trousers tied in around the ankle with wide strips of cloth. Here you can see him in his flowered jacket and his striped trousers that are tied in around the bottom with strips of cloth. 
The two sisters of Little Pear were very good little girls. One was called Dagu because she was the biggest, and the other was called Ergu because she was the second one. They both wore jackets and trousers like Little Pear. But you could tell that they were girls instead of boys because they wore tiny gold earrings and because their jackets buttoned down one side. Dagu's hair was braided into one long braid and Ergu's was parted in the middle and braided into two shorter ones. Dagu was quiet and gentle and helped her mother about the house and when Little Pear was a baby, it was Dagu who carried him around on her back and taught him nursery rhymes. But when Little Pear grew older, it was Ergu who played with him the most, for she was only two years older than he, and she was a tomboy besides. The house that Little Pear lived in, like other houses in the village, was made of sun-baked bricks, the color of dust. There was only one room with an earthen floor and paper windows. Does that sound like your house or does that sound different than your house? Is your house made of bricks? Are they brown or red like dust? Maybe that's the same as your house and maybe that's different. How many rooms are in your house? Does your house have one room, like little pears, or does your house have more than one room? An earthen floor means that they just have dirt. They don't have a real a floor made of wood or tiles or carpet, just dirt on the floor. Is that the same as your house or different? And paper windows, their windows were made of paper. Is that what your windows made out of? Are your windows the same as little pears or are your windows different than little pears? If some of these things are different than your house, part of that might be because we live in the United States of America and they live in China, but mostly that's because we live in 2018 and they lived in the early 1900s. You couldn't see through the windows unless you poked your finger through the paper but they made the room a little lighter. There was one door with a little window in it that led into the courtyard in the front of the house. All around the courtyard, there was a high wall and in it, there was a gateway leading to the street. There were two stone lions in front of the gateway on either side of the red painted door. They had curly manes and mouths that looked as though they might be laughing or might be roaring. Little Pear could never decide which. The house was at the end of the street at the edge of the village. You could stand in the gateway and look across the flat fields towards the river. You could not see the river. But you could, see there he is in the gateway with the stone lines beside him and his little ponytail. But you could see the tall masts and sails of the ships. Do you know what a mast of a ship is? A mast is a piece of wood that sticks up off the ship and it holds the sails on by ropes or wires that are tied to the mast, and that's what holds the sails on the ships. So you could see those tall poles sticking up out of the river, even though you couldn't see the river. But you could see the tall masts and sails of the ships. It gave Little Pear a happy feeling to stand there and think of the river and of the sea and of the whole world. His little pigtail would stand straight up with excitement. Inside the house, there was very little furniture. The family all slept on a huge square bed made of gray bricks 
and built against the wall. It was wide and flat and hard. The pillows were shaped like long rolls. They were hard too. But Little Pear and his family rolled themselves up in their warm quilts and slept very comfortably. There was a brick stove at the back of the room where Little Pear's mother cooked the meals. And there was also a fireplace under the bed. In the winter, they had a fire burning there to keep them warm. During the day, they put a small table with short legs on top of the bed and gathered there for their meals. Their only pet was a yellow bird who sang sweetly from his cage, which swung by the open door. Does that sound like the inside of your house or does that sound different than your house? Do you put a table on top of your bed? Is your bed on top of a fireplace? Are your pillows hard and shaped like cylinders? Does your whole family sleep together in one bed? Again, some of these differences might be because you live in one place and this family lived in China, but most of these differences are probably because this book is set over 100 years ago and you live in 2018. But it's interesting to think about how different Little Pear's house was from your house. I know there's no fireplace underneath my bed. Chapter 2. Little Pear Sees the City. You remember what this transportation is called where one man is running and pulling a cart with another person sitting in the cart? If you don't remember what that's called, listen and as I read chapter 2 to you and see if you can hear the word that starts with an R that describes this transportation. One winter day, when the sun was shining brightly and the frost lay on the hard ground, Little Pear said, Oh, Mother, I'm going out to play. I will take good, very good care of myself. His mother put two extra coats on him with quilted linings and a cap with flaps over the ears. Run along and have a good time. Don't fall. And she laughed as he disappeared through the front gate because he looked so funny and fat in all his padded coats. Even if he should fall down, he couldn't possibly feel the bump. Little Pear ran down to the village street. Come play, he called to his friends. His friends were all out playing along the street. Some were playing tag and some were tossing shuttlecocks. Do you remember what shuttlecocks are? He says his friends are tossing shuttlecocks. They might have looked something like this. And they're playing tag. Have you ever played tag? You play with us, they called to Little Pear. Oh no, he answered. I'm going to the pond on the other side of the village. I'm going to slide. And he ran on. There he is with his mom. His mom dressed him up in the two quilted jackets and the hat with ear flaps. And there's his mom. She told him to go out and play, but do you think she meant for him to go all the way to the other side of the village? We'll see. Soon he came, and there they are, tossing shuttlecocks kicking it with their feet. Soon he came to the house of his friend, Big Head. He looked inside the courtyard. There was Big Head with his baby brother on his back. Big Head, he called, will you play with me? I'm going to slide on the pond. Big Head was Little Pear's best friend. He was a little older than Little Pear. He had a round, solemn face too, and his head was shaved like little pears. But instead of only one pigtail, Big Head had three, one over his forehead and one over each ear. He shook his head sadly when Little Pear asked him to come and slide. I cannot come, he replied. My mother has gone to market and I am minding my baby brother. 
will you stay with me? You think little Pear will decide to stay with his friend and his little his little brother? Not now, said little Pear, for the sun is shining and I must go slide. And he ran on. At the end of the village, little Pear almost bumped into a friendly pig. Pig, he said, you should look where you are going. Do you want to come and slide with me? But the pig didn't understand. So little Pear ran on down the path and across the field until he came to the pond. This is fun, he thought, and he began to slide. He slid and slid and the wind came up and blew him about like a tiny ship. Now think about this. He's wearing two quilted jackets and a hat with flaps and he's sliding on top of a pond. What season do you think it probably is? in China at this time. I would say it's winter in China at this time if he needs two jackets and a hat. And what happens in winter that makes it possible to slide on top of a pond? If you're from Texas like me, you might not have ever seen it in real life. But a pond, some, in some places where it gets cold enough, might freeze over on the top and have ice all over it. And he's sliding on the ice. In 2018, we would usually put ice skates on to go sliding on ice on a pond. But he, I think he's just sliding with his feet. Let's see if it gives any more information about sliding. Sometimes he fell down. Kerflop. But he was so bundled up that he couldn't feel the bumps. I should like to be a boat and sail down the river thought little pair, or I should like to be a kite and fly up in the sky. But hi, it is fun to be a little boy and slide on the pond. Just then there was a great noise as several boys appeared from the village and ran toward the pond, followed by a puppy. They fastened on some skates, which were flat pieces of wood. Have you ever seen ice skates in 2018? In 2018, are ice skates a flat piece of wood that you strap on your feet? In 2018, in the United States of America, we don't use flat pieces of wood strapped to our feet. Our ice skates look very different. But in the early 1900s in China, in this village, that's what they were using is just a flat piece of wood instead of a skate like we have. Each boy had only one skate. That's also something different. Even though we do ice skate, we do it very differently. They only had one skate, which he slid along on, pushing himself with the other foot. They started across the pond toward Little Pear, shouting, while the puppy scampered and slid on their heels, barking loudly. The biggest boy had a long pole with a spike on the end of it, and he pushed it between his legs, and this made him go very fast. That almost sounds like skiing instead of skating. Before a little pair could blink his eyes, the big boy had come up to him. What are you doing on our pond? He cried. This is no place for little fellows like you. Go away home. To your mother. This made little pair so angry that he sat down hard. But he said as proudly as he could, I can skate too. The other boys came sliding up and circled around him. The puppy looked inquiringly in his face. They laughed when Little Pear said that he could skate. You cannot skate when you're sitting down, they said rudely. And besides, you have no skates. Little Pear wanted to cry, but instead, he picked himself up and trotted to the edge of the pond. Then he turned around and, When I grow up, I will spank you, he cried. The big boys continued to skate in circles around the pond. And Little Pear started sadly for home. Suddenly he stopped. No, it would never do to go home now. When it was such a fine day, he didn't want to go home. 
there was so much to see out of doors. He turned back across the field in the direction of the high road. The high road was really high. If you stood on one side of it, you couldn't see what lay on the other side. But after you had climbed up the path to the top of the high road, you could look down at the flat fields on the other side and see away in the distance the small dust-colored houses of the other villages. The high road stretched across the fields for miles and miles. It led into the villages and out of the villages, and still it kept going. Little Pear knew that if he followed it, he would reach the city, and he wished that his legs were not so short. On the other side of the high road were trees. There was a row of peach trees, first, and then a row of willow trees behind them. In the spring, they were very beautiful, but now it was winter, and the wind swept along the high road and crackled their branches. Little Pear began to feel hungry, but there were so many sights to see as he trudged along that he didn't remember how long it was since he had eaten. Rickshaws went by. Remember what a rickshaw is? A rickshaw is a cart pulled by a person. The one he saw probably looked something like this. With richly dressed people riding in them, Little Pear wondered how the men who pulled the rickshaws could run so fast because some of them had very heavy loads. In one, there was a fat man with several bundles and in another was a whole family riding, a mother with three children. Yet the men who pulled them ran so quickly, they all soon left Little Pear far behind. Carts went by, and men traveling with bundles slung over their shoulders. Ooh, carts, those would be pulled by horses usually, and men with bundles slung over their shoulders. And there's Little, little Pear. You think Little Pear should be this far from home? Let's see. Little Pear looked longingly at the carts and wished that he might ride in one. They were fine carts with two great wooden wheels and sides and rounded top covered with blue cloth. The drivers sat in the open front with their legs crossed lazily and sometimes flicked the horses with long whips they held with red tassels on the end. The carts plodded along slowly, but even they went more quickly than Little Pear. Little Pear trudged along and wondered how far away the city was. Suddenly a man passed him and stopped. Where are you going, little traveler? You are very small to be alone on this great high road, he said. The man was tall and young and had a kind face. He wore a long blue gown with a black satin waistcoat over it. His, on his head, he had a small round black hat with a braided button on top. Little Pear looked up at him and smiled. I'm going with you, he said. Should Little Pear just be walking with strangers that he just met? But I'm going into the city. It is too far for short legs like yours. Little Then Little Pear looked very sad. I have never seen the city, he said. Can I get there and back by sunset? The kind man asked him where his home was. And when Little Pear told him that it was in the village of Shegu, he was very much astonished. But that is a long way. How far you have walked. We are nearer to the city. And he lifted Little Pear... There he is, he lifted Little Pear. And this little caption says, he could see the whole world nearly. At least that's the way it felt to him. And he lifted Little Pear onto his shoulders, saying, I will take you with me, and we will reach the city, and I will send you home by a friend of mine who has a cart. Little Pear was very happy. From the shoulders of the tall man, he could see the whole world nearly. This was a great adventure, and he kept thinking how proud 
Ergu will be to find that her brother is a traveler. Jingle, jingle, jingle. What do you think that jingle, jingle, jingling is? A donkey trotted by with the bells around its neck and, sa and gay saddlebags. A man was sitting on his back, and he smiled at Little Pear. Should you like a ride? he asked. I am riding, replied Little Pear, and he held tight to his new friend and laughed as the donkey tinkled away in the distance. The sun was setting, but Little Pear had forgotten that he should be at home. He was growing sleepy and hungry, but he was thinking, I am seeing the world. At last, the tall man said, Look, there is the great city. Little Pear sat straight up with a jerk and looked. There, not far away, was the high gray walls of the city. The high road led straight up to the city gate. It was a huge archway, and above it was a tower with a roof of curved tiles. As Little Pear and his friends grew nearer, the city walls seemed to grow higher. And as they were about to enter the gate, the tower above it seemed to reach the sky. Inside the city walls, there were crowds of people filling the streets. There was a tremendous bustle of carts, rickshaws, and traveling men selling their wares. Everyone was in the middle of the street, as though there were no sidewalks. The shops along the street had open fronts. <coughs> so that you could see what was inside them. There was food shops, and basket shops, and lantern shops, and silk shops, and every other kind of shop you could possibly imagine. Lights blazed out from inside the shops, and red and gold signs and banners were swung in front of them. There was so much noise and so many lights that it made Little Pear blink. He meant to say, I like the city, but instead he said, I am so hungry. There's that city gate. Look how big the gate is compared to these people. If these people look that small, think about how tall that city gate must be. What do you think Little Pear's mom and dad are thinking about this time? The kind man took him to a shop where they were, were round trays heaped with steamed dumplings, fresh and hot, and other trays filled with delicious twisted breads. When Little Pear had eaten all that he could hold, he fell fast asleep. Late that night, a cart rattled into the village of Shagu, and the driver stopped at the first house to ask if the little boy had been lost. The family ran out in great excitement. Little Pear, the son of Mr. Hong, ran away today, they cried. Perhaps it is he. And they peeked inside the cart. There, wrapped in a warm quilt, was Little Pear sleeping soundly. They showed the driver of the cart the house. So his parents thought he ran away. Where Little Pear's family lived. And Little Pear was soon safe in the arms of his mother. With all the family about him, and as many of the neighbors as the small house would hold, you were naughty to run away, said his father, and his mother said, I, he was very naughty, but I am so glad to have him back, and we shall not spank him this time. And they all crowded around Little Pear and asked him many questions. Oh, Little Pear, cried Ergu excitedly, what did you see in the city? I ate some dumplings, replied Little Pear sleepily. And that was chapter one and two of the book, Little Pear. I hope you enjoyed the reading of Little Pear and that you'll come back for video two to watch chapters three and four.